nowhere. Bugs. You know them, you love them. You consume about two pounds of them a year. And while bugs are cool and all, compared to things like space bounty hunters and vampire hunters and magical forest cats, you might think that a game all about bugs would be kind of lame. And yet Hollow Knight's bug aesthetic works incredibly well as a metroidvania. Team Cherry was able to craft a bug world that was equal parts elegant, mysterious, and terrifying. The game's art style takes inspiration from the dark and brooding atmosphere of the 1985 OVA Angel's Egg. The various NPCs found throughout the world provide an array of personalities that only increase the player's intrigue in the ancient kingdom they are exploring. One aspect of Hollow Knight that can be easily understated is how well it injects levity and charm in just the right amounts. There's no doubt that one of Hollow Knight's biggest strengths is how it creates such an engaging universe full of captivating characters. But still, why bugs? Team Cherry elaborated on this in an interview they had with Artistry and Games all the way back in December of 2014. We don't have a particular preference towards bugs. Because our history was game jams, we sort of had to develop characters and designs that could be produced very quickly. So we could, you know, you could build up enemies and you could build up spaces um, efficiently across, say, 72 hours or 48 hours. And surprisingly enough, bugs uh, are the types of creatures that are easily sort of created in that time. So that's a, that sounds a little bit... Um, <laughs> dispassionate I suppose <laughs> but that, that really is the, the inception of it and then that's not to say that we don't actually love the characters that come out of it. So basically bugs are easy to draw and it's no doubt that Hollow Knight's sheer size and enemy count is in part thanks to how easy it was to create new assets for the game but that raises another interesting question what about the real life bugs that might have inspired Team Cherry to make all these different characters? Can we find real world analogies to these NPCs and enemies? According to Ari Gibson in a Reddit AMA, their primary method for finding interesting bug designs was to Google weird bug. And we can see that some of the characters are blatant ripoffs of real bugs. But at the same time, Team Cherry was very lenient with their designs, choosing to ignore true bug anatomy when convenient. We're not, and we're not sort of sticking hard and fast to known insects. It's, it's kind of just there's a general insect quality and it's, it's quite referential without being too slavish to yeah. reality. Hopefully no bug scientists that play the game and get really annoyed about nothing really makes sense <laughs> biologically. Well, I might not be a bug scientist, but I have seen a bug's life five times. And I've even seen the first 25 minutes of ants. So I think I'm fairly qualified to judge Team Cherry's work here. That's why, in this video, we are going to be talking about all the different kinds of bugs that appear in Team Cherry's Hollow Knight. Which ones have real life counterparts? Which ones are completely detached from reality? Which ones will I completely forget to mention? Well, there's only one way to find out. And before we get started, let me just mention that none of this is relevant to Hollow Knight lore. Crafting lore theories using real life ecology is a bad idea, and if you try to do it, I will find you. Let's start off with the most diverse type of insect on the planet, beetles. Beetles in the real world are most easily defined by the hardened pair of wings on their backs, called elytra. Beetles are everywhere, making up about 25% of all identified life forms on the planet. And that's pretty much true for Hollow Knight as well. If we were to look at the main character for example, the mandibles on its head are pretty similar to the giant mandibles found on stag beetles. Granted nothing else on it looks like any type of bug whatsoever, but I'll take what I can get here. The generic husk enemies found throughout the game might be beetles as well. I mean, they don't really look like beetles, but they look less not like beetles than any other type of insect. And a lot of NPCs which don't really look like anything could potentially just be generic beetles. I'm talking Quirrell, the Godseeker, Middlebell. When in doubt, just call it a beetle. But there are quite a few characters we can confidently pin down as beetles. Bretta is straight up canonically confirmed as a beetle in the game manual, so that's an easy one. These moments are rare though, so don't get too excited. Another obvious beetle is the Dung Defender, who takes inspiration from Steven Seagal. Er, wait, who takes inspiration from the Dung Beetle. You can break Dung Beetles down into roughly three categories. Rollers, Tunnelers, and Dwellers. Rollers are probably the ones most people think of. They basically roll poop around so that they can bury it somewhere else, either as food storage or as a mating chamber. Tunnelers just bury the dung wherever they find it. 
and dwellers don't bury the dung at all. Instead, they just chill wherever they can find it. I think it's pretty safe to say that the Dung Defender is a roller. He has amassed a large pile of poop in one location, and even rolls up balls to throw at his enemies. This makes him similar to the Plum Dung Beetle, which is also a roller, and also purple. I don't think they throw their poop at other bugs though. They would rather fight to keep a hold of them, since they're so valuable. There's another type of beetle that also sees a lot of love from Team Cherry, the Rhinoceros Beetle. Rhinoceros beetles are a subfamily of scarab beetles, and they're called rhinoceros beetles because many of them have giant horns, which are used both for digging and for fighting over mates. Looking at the bugs of Hallownest, the nailsmith appears to be a type of rhinoceros beetle, possibly a Siamese rhinoceros beetle or elephant beetle, given the arch shape of the front horn. The Watcher Knights might be a type of rhinoceros beetle called the ox beetle. Of course, ox beetles aren't as round as these roly polies, but they have the similar three horns. Another possibility is that the Nail Masters are ox beetles, since they also have the same three horn thing going on. Finally, we have the last stag. Now you might think that the last stag would be some kind of stag beetle, you know, because of his name. But stag beetles are usually identified by their large mandibles, which the last stag has none. The last stag does have horns similar to the European rhinoceros beetle or the enema pan, so he could be one of those. According to a Team Cherry blog post, Blue Child Joni is based on the ground beetle, which is one of the most populous families in the entire animal kingdom, with over 40,000 species. Most ground beetles, and a lot of other beetles, are unable to fly because their outer elytra have fused together, completely covering their inner wings. Next up, Willow. Her design is clearly just that of the giraffe weevil. They are native to Madagascar, so keep your eyes peeled the next time you're passing through. Their elongated necks help them to build nests and fight one another for mating rights. Charged luma flies appear to be based on lightning bugs, or fireflies as some people call them. Fireflies are beetles that use bioluminescence to attract mates and prey. Although the fact that luma flies in Hallownest are so much smaller than any other type of beetle found in the game is very confusing, and probably not something we should think about for too long. This next beetle is a bit different. Wyatt is one of the ghost bugs found in the Spirits Glade. The Glade has a number of bugs that are a bit easier to connect to real bugs, probably due to Kickstarter backers just googling cool bug ideas and submitting them to Team Cherry. Wyatt appears to be based on the Nairobi fly, native to East Africa. They also go by the name Dragon Bug, because their bodies contain a corrosive chemical called Pederin, which causes chemical burns on human skin. This is why Wyatt talks about having an acidic touch. His original Kickstarter drawing looks like he just walked out of 2020, but it seems Team Cherry toned down his design to better fit in with Halloness totally normal looking characters. Next, let's look at a bug that is a bit harder to pin down, Cornifer. William Pellin drew the original concept for Cornifer, and there are a few directions we can go with him. His most obvious trait is his trunk-like nose, which probably isn't a nose, but instead his mouth. One suggestion I've seen is that Cornifer is a weevil, which would make him yet another beetle character. And I will admit, on the surface, he does really look like one. He's got the long snout and the round, dummy thick body. However, the weevil's rostrum is actually pretty rigid, whereas Cornifer's mouth flops around not unlike a wet hot dog. Another possibility is that Cornifer is just a fat mosquito. Although he doesn't really look like a mosquito, he's way too thick, and his antennae are way longer than what you see on a mosquito. Instead, Cornifer appears to be what is called a true bug. As it turns out, bug is a scientific term that only applies to certain insects. Unlike all those fake bugs you have been hearing about like ants, butterflies, and Steven Seagal, true bugs tend to have a long hollow mouth part called a proboscis, used for piercing and sucking. This would include aphids, cicadas, stink bugs, and bed bugs to name a few. There are a lot of true bugs out there, and Cornifer is pretty generic looking, so I could see him being a type of stink bug, or maybe a western conifer seed bug. And chances are, Izelda is the same species as well. They just cranked her sex appeal down a few notches. Another type of true bug we can find in Hallownest is the assassin bug. These are bugs which use their proboscis to inject toxins into their prey, and suck out their insides. Gorhak in the Spirits Glade is confirmed to be based on the assassin bug. We can see that he dons ant corpses around his neck. Some assassin bugs, such as the Echinthaspis petax, do this as a form of camouflage. Another assassin bug we can identify is Dr. Chagax, 
Dr. Chagax appears to be based on a type of assassin bug called the kissing bug, which is known for transmitting a disease known as Chagas disease. Chagas disease is a tropical parasitic disease that, if left untreated, has been known to kill people. They're called kissing bugs because they usually bite people around their mouths. Those horny devils. If you read Dr. Chagak's dialogue, he sounds pretty depressed, like he's bad at his job, which makes a lot of sense. So identifying bugs like this is pretty cool and all, but what about the Hollow Knight characters who look absolutely nothing like the bugs they are apparently based on? One of the Kickstarter backer characters is Cloth, who is canonically a cicada. And well, not only does Cloth cover her face with a sack, but she also doesn't really look anything like a cicada. Now obviously, Team Cherry had to base the character on the Kickstarter drawing, so I can't really give them a hard time or anything. And despite her appearance, Cloth actually does share some behavioral characteristics of cicadas. In Cloth's first encounter, she burrows out of the ground. Cicadas spend most of their lives underground, and once they come up to the surface, they live for a few weeks, have some sex, and then they die. So Cloth is two for three on that one. She also makes a clicking sound similar to cicadas. Cicadas do this as a way to attract mates. And oh yeah, that is sexy. These sounds also repel predators such as birds. Doesn't seem to work on mantises though. So tough luck cloth. Another character we know is based on a cicada is Molten in the Spirit's Glade. And yet again, he doesn't really look anything like a cicada. He does have one thing in common with them however, Cicadas, along with several other species of arthropods, molt their skins several times over their lives in a process called ectasis. This allows them to grow larger as well as replace lost limbs. Molten's original concept was that he kept part of his molt for additional protection. That explanation is kind of left out of the main game though, so his character is just weird looking for no reason. The fan favorite aspid enemies also appear to be true bugs, as they are most likely based on aphids. Aphids are sap-sucking insects that can be found in a variety of different colors. Aphids are also known for how rapidly they reproduce, being able to reproduce asexually like we see in-game. Some species of aphids are even capable of telescopic development, which is when an animal gives birth to another animal that is already pregnant itself. So basically, if Inception was about pregnancy. Moving on from the true bugs, let's shift our attention towards butterflies and moths. The only blatant butterfly in Hollow Knight is Marissa, a pink butterfly found in the City of Tears. In reality, pink butterflies don't actually exist, so if you see a pink butterfly singing to you in real life, maybe go see a doctor. While butterflies aren't prevalent in Hollow Knight, the same can't be said for moths. Seer is canonically a moth, and she looks somewhat like a muslin moth. The Radiance is never canonically called a moth, but she appears to be a silk moth. Thistlewind, a Kickstarter character, is another moth in the game, and he might be either a Pruriri moth or a Sallow moth. There's Markoth, who doesn't really look like any moth in particular. He might be a ruby tiger, but I don't think he's really based on anything. Finally, there is Karina. Karina is a bit odd because she doesn't really talk about being connected to the Radiance's moth tribe in any way, but despite that, she is clearly based on a moth, specifically an emperor moth. She has these circles on her wings, which is a defense mechanism several species of butterflies and moths have developed. These markings can trick predators into thinking they are the eyes of other predators. Of course, butterflies and moths don't start out as such. Bugs like butterflies, ants, and beetles are holometabolous. That means that their larval and adult stages of life are separated by a pupil stage, so the adults end up looking very different from the babies. In contrast, insects like praying mantises, cockroaches, crickets, and true bugs are hemimetabolous. These insects don't go through the pupil stage, and instead experience gradual changes over the course of multiple moltings, going from nymphs to adults, with the only big changes being the development of wings or reproductive organs. So basically, the babies just look like smaller adults. There are a few caterpillars found in Hollow Knight, caterpillars being the larval forms of butterflies and moths. Bardoon is described as a caterpillar in the Wanderer's Journal. He's probably based on the silkworm, which would be the caterpillar that eventually turns into the silk moth. This would imply that Bardoon eventually turns into the Radiance. I really doubt that was Team Cherry's intention here, so hopefully you can see why I don't value these comparisons from a lore perspective. There's also Marmu, who is clearly based on a puss moth caterpillar. There is also one soul totem that appears to be based on the dragon-headed caterpillar. 
And then of course, there are the grubs. It's pretty clear that the design for the grubs is based on a caterpillar. It's also apparent that grubs eventually turn into grubber flies. So they sort of undergo a metamorphosis similar to caterpillars. But the whole getting eaten by their father thing... Yeah, I have no idea where Team Cherry got this idea. Also, the word grub actually has a specific meaning. Technically speaking, a grub is the larval form of a beetle, not a moth or a butterfly. Basically, grubs make no sense whatsoever. Not from an ecological perspective, and not from a lore perspective. These disgusting creatures haunt my nightmares. Speaking of larval forms of bugs in Hollow Knight that are very confusing to think about, let's talk about the maggots. Maggots are the larval forms of flies. Flies are usually identified by having a single pair of flying wings, alongside these things called halter wings, which help with maneuverability. There are both adult flies and maggots found in Hollow Knight. Gruzzers don't even seem to have a pupil state, as when the Gruz mother dies, she explodes into a bunch of baby Gruzzers. Not only is that really freaking gross, but it also doesn't make sense. Flies lay eggs, which hatch into maggots, and eventually become flies. The closest thing in the real world to the Gruz mother is probably the Tetsi fly, which gives live birth to maggots. Which is also really freaking gross, but it's a different kind of freaking gross to the Gruz mother. Maggots appear to just be their own separate group of bugs in Howl Nest. In fact, the game's code calls them slugs, so it might be that Team Cherry just called them maggots to signify how worthless they are, and they originally weren't really supposed to be based on maggots. While we're talking about flies, I should mention the squits, who appear to be based on mosquitoes. The venge fly might be based on the horse fly, as they have similar mandibles, although they also kind of look like Dobson flies, except Dobson flies have massive wings, so it's not a clear comparison. For this next group of bugs, well, there are a few inaccuracies with how they are represented in-game, and I'm hardly qualified to cover it myself, so I called up a good friend who knows a lot about insects and animal biology. But Steven Seagal was busy, so instead I got Tearzoo. Now let's talk about one of the most memorable enemy insect factions in the game, the Mantis Tribe. As much as I love the depiction of the mantises in Hollow Knight, the unfortunate truth is that their role in the game isn't a great representation of actual mantis ecology. Mantises are powerful predators, so them being depicted as fierce warriors doesn't bother me. Like in the game, mantises do use their sharp raptorial forelimbs for grabbing and slashing. With that said, the idea that mantises, a type of insect notorious for being antisocial and even cannibalistic, are depicted as a eusocial species that build the only surviving civilization in Hollow Nest is pretty laughable, especially considering there are plenty of insects that actually would fit this description quite well, like termites, or my personal recommendation, army ants. In addition to this, there's one more mistake in the mantis tribe's lore that speaks not just to a misunderstanding of mantis biology, but of insect biology in general. And that's the quote from the Hunter's Journal that reads, Member of a proud tribe, fiercely protective of its territory, launches stinging attacks with its sharp needle abdomen. As it grows, it loses the ability to fly. Passage into adulthood is often celebrated, but as time goes by, we realize what we have lost. Now, we're going to put aside the fact that there are no mantises that use stingers, because there's an even more important inaccuracy here. Mantises do not lose the ability to fly as they grow up. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Mantises only have their wings when they're in their final instar, or life stage, after they've molted for the final time in their lives. And this is true for all insects, not just mantises. There are no insects which can fly as nymphs or larvae, and then lose this ability later on. It's just not how insects work. Don't get me wrong, Hollow Knight is one of my favorite games of all time, and I understand that the biological accuracy wasn't a priority for the dev team. But for the sake of education, I do think things like this are worth pointing out. So in reality, mantises are very antisocial. But there are characters in Hollow Knight whose real-life counterparts aren't antisocial, such as Leg Eater. Leg Eater is most definitely a termite, specifically a termite worker. His body has the same coloration of a termite. And there's also Divine, who looks very much like a termite queen. Termite queens like Divine have these huge abdomens that can produce tens of thousands of eggs every day. Leg Eater uses the smell of the unbreakable charms created by Divine to find her up in Dirtmouth. In reality, termites like Leg Eater are actually mostly blind and rely on smell to navigate around. Pheromones play a big role in real termite colonies. Termites can grow up in several different body types including soldiers, workers, reproductives, and queens. And a lot of this is determined by pheromones. Soldier termites will produce pheromones that deter younger termites from developing into soldier termites, 
thus making sure adequate numbers of each type of termite make up the colony. That's how there is only one termite queen. She also produces a pheromone that keeps other termite queens from developing. There are also termite kings as well, which might explain why Leg Eater wants to become a king by collecting Geo. As for the whole cannibalism exhibited by Divine, that doesn't seem to happen too often. So the group of bugs known most for their cannibalistic tendencies are shown as being a strong community, while the bugs known most for their strong communities are shown being cannibals. This game would have made so much more sense if we had fought the termite lords. Another group of bugs known for their strong sense of community are bees. And we can see that represented in the bee colony found in Kingdom's Edge. They seem to be based on honeybees, and much like termites, pheromones play a large role in determining how the colony acts. Unlike termites, however, the queen bee is actually developed through diet. Normal pleb worker bees eat a substance called bee bread, which is a combination of nectar and pollen. But queen bees are fed royal jelly, a secretion that is collected from the tops of worker bees' heads. Although queen bees never reach the ridiculous size that Hive Queen Vespa's corpse does. In fact, beekeepers actually have to put marks on queen bees so that they can find them among their subjects. Also, Vespa looks more like a wasp than a bee. And the word Vespa is the genus that hornets belong to. And hornets and bees do not get along. So Vespa as the queen of a beehive is a bit confusing. Another well-known group of communal insects are ants. Unfortunately, there is only one candidate in Hollow Knight who could be considered an ant. God Tamer. She looks like an ant given her elbowed antenna. She also is similar to an ant in that she has tamed another animal. Some species of ants kind of do this as well, keeping aphids and caterpillars as livestock for sugar. However, according to the backer who created God Tamer, Flavor Savior, she is actually supposed to be a cockroach. Cockroaches are fairly social, with some species being capable of collective decision making. This means that if enough of them are together, they will act in unison. So there is a social aspect, but not quite to the level of ants. Also, cockroaches can't even tame anything. Idiots. Next up, grasshoppers. Kayleaf and Fair Orthop in the Queen's Garden are grasshoppers. And we know this because they are literally named after their scientific name. Grasshoppers fall under an order called Orthoptera and the suborder Califera. But there is a little more going on here. It appears that one of these grasshoppers is suffering from some kind of fungal infection. Over the years, people have theorized that the effects of the Radiance's infection were inspired by real-life Cordyceps fungus, which controls its victims and basically takes over their minds and bodies. But none of their dialogue mentions anything about how one of them is sprouting mushrooms out of their body, so I guess they don't mind it. In Green Path, we can find these bugs that cover themselves in moss as a defense mechanism. In the insect world, there is the debris-carrying lacewing. The larval form of these bugs actually collect debris such as lichen on their backs, similar to the assassin bugs I mentioned earlier. Unlike the moss creeps and the moss chargers, however, these larvae are vicious hunters, so I doubt they were anything more than perhaps a loose inspiration for Team Cherry. I have one last insect to talk about. This beast is the apex predator of the insect kingdom. We're talking triple S tier. I'm of course talking about the dragonfly. Dragonflies are incredibly efficient hunters. This is mainly due to the insane amount of control they have in their four wings, as well as their gigantic eyes, which have thousands of lenses and a near 360 degree vision. They also appear to be able to predict where other flying insects will be and can catch them 95% of the time. Dragonflies eat their own weight in insects every day. There are two bugs in game that are possibly dragonflies. First there is Perpetos Nu in the Spirits Gallade. I know he's a dragonfly because I asked the backer who created him, Perpetual Noob, and he said he's a dragonfly. Nu is not much of an apex predator though, because he's dead. Another candidate is the Aluba. These enemies don't act anything like dragonflies though. They just sort of float around and do nothing. So it's possible that they are antlions or mayflies or damselflies. Alubas are just too nondescript to tell, honestly. So we've been able to identify one or two insects so far. But of course, there are more than just insects in Hollow Knight. There are some creatures I would call insect adjacent, I guess. Take the balder, for example. These things are most similar to pill bugs, as they both roll up into balls. Pill bugs aren't insects, but instead isopods. They have way more than just six legs, like you would find on a regular insect, and they have rigid segmented exoskeletons. Another example is the tick tick, which is probably based on this obscure creature known as 
a tick, which is an arachnid. Speaking of arachnids, I think it's time we take a detour into Deep Nest to talk about some of the other bug-like creatures found in Hollow Knight. Much like mantises, spiders are lone wolves, exhibiting the same antisocial and cannibalistic tendencies. But as it turns out, there are a few dozen species of spiders that actually do live in communities, such as the African social spider. In these communities, some female adult spiders will help raise the young of other spiders in the group, sort of like what we see with midwife. However, there aren't any queen spiders in these communities, and I honestly doubt any of this was the inspiration for Team Cherry. But I hope that the knowledge that some spiders live in communities of hundreds makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Nos could potentially be inspired by ant mimicking spiders. Ant mimicry is actually super popular among a variety of animals, simply because ants are everywhere all over the world. And there are over 300 species of spiders that mimic ant behavior and morphology, either as a way to hunt them or to avoid being attacked by them. Of course, Nos can apparently read minds and change shape at will. There aren't any ant mimicking spiders that can change shape, but we can't know for sure if they can read minds or not. Massmaker has these really long arms, similar to those found on the whip spider and the tailless whip scorpion. While these things are arachnids, they aren't technically spiders or scorpions. Their pedipalps have evolved into arm-like limbs, allowing them to grab prey similar to praying mantises. Another non-spider found in Deep Nest is the Garpede. These creatures appear to be either centipedes or millipedes. Within the game's code they were referred to as centipedes, but centipedes usually only have one pair of legs per body segment, while millipedes have two. So it's a bit suspect, but it gets worse when we talk about dirt carvers. This creature looks a lot like a silverfish, but in the game's code they were referred to as baby centipedes. So these are most likely the baby form of the garpede, but apparently dirt carvers are born from carver hatchers, winged creatures who spit dirt carvers out of their vagina. None of this makes any sense biologically, as centipedes can't even grow wings. It's so bad, even the game itself just throws its hands up on this one. Outside of Deep Nest, we can find a character called Hex in the Spirits Gallade, who appears to be a tarantula. Tarantulas are a family of spiders most easily definable by their fangs. Unlike spider fangs, which point inwards, tarantula fangs point downward. Another hint is that tarantula eyes are usually all located on the front of the head whereas spider's eyes are all over the place. All the creatures I've described so far have been arthropods, but Hall Knight goes even further than that. There are the slug-like creatures such as Salubra, Un, and potentially Gorb. There are the jellyfish-like creatures of the Fog Canyon, which are incredibly accurate to real-life jellyfish in that they can fly through the air and explode on contact. There are the mushrooms who can speak using a shared mind, which might be a nod to how one fungal organism can actually be a giant complex underground system. There are the flukes of the waterways, which are hideous and I hate them. And then there are the plant-like creatures such as the gray mourner, who appears to be some kind of wilted flower. But I wanted to end this video on the pale king, specifically his worm form. Obviously it doesn't look much like any actual worms, but I do want to mention a specific type of worm called a bloodworm. What's interesting about bloodworms is that they actually have metal teeth made out of copper which they use to inject venom into their victims. So it's a small visual similarity to the pale worm anyway. Whether or not bloodworms have the power of foresight and can undergo transformations, I'm not sure. The Wikipedia doesn't mention it, so it's a definite maybe. All in all, I'll have to put Hollow Knight in the C tier for accurate insect representation. Honestly, I'm surprised this game is so popular for being so riddled with basic misconceptions about entomology. I remember my first time playing it, I nearly vomited when I saw how inaccurate the Grusmother was from an ecological perspective. While the world of Hollow Knight doesn't reflect the insect world that closely, it still does a great job of capturing how truly bizarre insects can be. Hopefully this video helped you better see the original creatures behind Team Cherry's design. If you want to learn more about insects and animals in general, then I'd recommend you check out Tirzu, who helped me with this video. If you are interested in his content, you can check him out over on facebook.com slash thetierzoo. He also uploads to some sketchy sounding website called YouTube, so check him out there if you are feeling brave. As for me, well I've hit my upload quota for this half of the year. See you in August!